What's up, guys? Today we're going to be questing for some comics. That's right. And what better way to do this quest than... <gasps> Cha-ching! Once in Future by Kieran Gillen, Dan Mora, and Tamara Bonvillain. Guys, Once in Future, it's like a urban fantasy comic. One that is a King Arthur story, but a fucking vastly different. It's a retelling on a whole nother level. Now, for those of you guys that watched my last comics video on Excalibur, you know that thing was riddled with spoilers. I'm going to try to keep this somewhat spoiler light and spoiler medium, if those are even fucking phrases. <laughs> but just know I'm going to be covering three volumes. That's volume one, volume two, and volume three. That's 18 issues. So I'm going to try to keep the majority of stuff kind of limited to the first issue while just kind of mentioning things that will be appearing throughout the rest of these volumes, all right? So that way I can really grab your interest, but also still leave plenty to your imagination, and that way you'll be surprised when you pick these things up, all right? Buckle up. Once in Future is a fast-paced comic that really takes the King Arthur story and flips it on its ass. Most of us would think King Arthur being resurrected would be a good thing. Because we know King Arthur as a hero, as somebody who treated others as equals, even when he didn't need to. Gosh, what a guy. <laughs> but here, Kieran Gillen really brings us a different King Arthur, okay? One that is an undead nightmare, one that you do not want to be walking around, <laughs> because he'll be fucking shit up. The story starts out where we see a group of nationalists and they have stolen a scabbard in hopes of resurrecting King Arthur. And now as the reader, we don't really know a whole lot of what's going on, but we can already get the vibe that this is probably not going to be a good day <laughs> or even a good idea. And then we see who also knows it's not going to be a good idea. Bridget. Bridget McGuire, who is a grandma and one hell of a spitfire, dude. I mean, this gal really reminds me of Sophia from Golden Girls, and you guys know how much I love fucking Golden Girls, okay? She's actually like a mixture of Sarah Connor meets Sophia. So probably one of the coolest goddamn grandmas ever to exist. No offense to my own grandmas, okay? You're all cool too. Stopping the resurrection of King Arthur is not going to be an easy task, and Bridget McGuire knows this, so she's going to enlist the help of her grandson, Duncan. Now, Duncan is a museum curator, and he's a really nice guy. In fact, you probably won't find a nicer guy, and that's really because of Bridget. Bridget designed Duncan, so to speak. We will come to find out that Duncan has a role to play, a role as a knight. He is going to play the role of Percival, and this is where we begin to understand how things have been fleshed out, and that Bridget has really raised Duncan as this good guy in case he needed to play this role of Percival. And I know this might be getting a little confusing, guys, but what we're dealing with here is feral stories. When stories are true, maybe not real, but they are true, and now they're coming after you, and Duncan McGuire is going to have to step up into this role as, as Percival. Now, on the flip side of this whole deal, you have, you know, this is the good guys. Now, we also have the bad guys. You have this resurrected King Arthur. You have the people that are trying to resurrect him. You have another knight who really mirrors Duncan. We have the knight Percival. And now Percival is another character who has been groomed since birth to really help with this resurrection process, okay? Galahad is the one that is going to search for the grail, that, which is really going to kick this whole thing off, okay? So now we're, we've kind of got our players. We've kind of got our motivations. We understand each side to some degree and shit just gets crazy. One of the things I think people are really going to jump behind this thing is just really the in the pacing. People are going to be able to pick this thing up and fly through it and just in, digest it properly. There's never been a comic I have felt has been more fast-paced, but yet it makes sense. This thing needs to be a million miles an hour because it's coming at you. High octane, just fucking nitrous action, guys. And it's so good. For those of you that are like me and have, you know, a taste for the dark and delicious, you're gonna be fed and just Full, your stomach distended from all the gore and gross and blood and just 
Yes, dude. I mean, there are some beautifully disturbing uh, illustrations in here. And Tamara Bonvillain's coloring is on par, dude. These guys have all worked off each other really well. But I'm just talking about the action and the blood and gore right now. Like, this stuff is done perfect. For those that like that grim, dark, dark, you know, visceral, gut-punching gore and bloody action, it's here, guys. This is one of the many reasons why I'm, like, coming at you with it, because fuck yeah, you know I love this shit, and I guarantee you, you will too. One of the obvious appeals to this uh, comic is just the lore, the King Arthur stuff, guys. People love that shit. It's a fantasy comic, so I definitely think that fantasy readers will love the shit out of this as well. It's King Arthur with, you know, flipped on its ass. But the thing is, it's flipped on its ass in the right way. You can tell that Kieran Gillen either did his homework or is a huge King Arthur fan. Because it might not be the King Arthur you're used to, but you can see where it's been handled with care in just the right way. And he's thrown all kinds of goodies in here. There is stuff that you will get, and maybe stuff you won't get because it's dug that deep. There are certain, like chunks of dialogue said by King Arthur that are in like old English or whatever that only Philip Chase will know what the fuck this stuff says and I hope he watches this video and maybe I really hope that he picks up this comic it is just awesome for fans of this stuff no matter like what level you are I think there's something there for you whether you're like surface or fucking knee deep there is lots of goodies in there. And so right out the gate in volume one, we're really getting hit with all the characters and kind of the setup of stuff. Now, I will say that these volumes end very self-contained. I know this is a limited run, and it's kind of like each volume is its own story, somewhat telling the overarching story, sort of. But in volume one, we're really getting hit with the characters. So we're going to meet the knights. We're, we're meeting Percival, Duncan. We're meeting Galahad. We're getting to meet Bridget and King Arthur and all these other players. And we're, we're understanding that this will quest for the grail because that's what Arthur needs to really like pull his whole deal off. Now, in book two is really when we start to bring other elements into this whole deal. And when we get Beowulf. We get Grendel, and we get good old Mommy Dearest. And then we move into Volume 3, where this is going to be, because of the new movie, The Green Knight, that just came out, I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy Volume 3, because guess what? The Green Knight makes an appearance, and it's fucking awesome, dude. And I love the little the way it, it all kind of works out with the character of Rose and The Green Knight. A lot of fun, and honestly, I feel like a seed has been planted, and I really can't wait to see that seed grow into a, a dastardly fruit. Now, I want to take a second and talk about the creators, because I think they're, they're, they're doing a bang-up job here. Like, this is amazing. I have never really seen uh, a group of creators work so well off of one another. This is really impressive. The artwork really plays off of the storytelling, and the coloring really fits the drawings so it's just all of it is hitting on all cylinders guys it's just a perfect mesh and i these guys just must have the most astounding chemistry or they just communicate very well because it obviously plays through onto the page in some of the most dynamic colorful badass storytelling that i've ever really consumed it's just this is what really caught me right out the gate and was like god damn this is impressive one thing i could see where people are like with kieran gillen's writing this is a fast-paced book guys and some people might take issue that there's not a little bit more depth or that we're not spending a little bit more time in certain things this is a story that's got an it's got a fucking <laughs> a mission okay and it started as a limited edition series so they had an idea from beginning to end so it's not like they're they're not trying to dilly dally they're trying to tell the story and get in and get out but that might annoy some people that are wanting that long haul or slow burn kind of style you're not going to get that here so those people might be a little bit you know disappointed but i guarantee you everybody else is going to be on board and like i said er earlier kieran gillen's writing is on point guys it really does feel like somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking about yet they're flipping it around in a whole new way that we have not seen his characters are fun they there has there is plenty of witty dialogue this thing is dark and it's also humorous i think that kieran gillen has written something that is really 
it really captures the spirit of something like Army of Darkness that is a horror movie, but it's also hilarious. And that is very much Wants in Future. It is scary and hilarious. Now, the artwork of Dan Mora is also extremely impressive. Dynamic illustrations, just really on point. Very strong, solid outlines, just bringing this thing just like Kieran Gillen is really writing a fast-paced story fucking Dan Mora is really keeping up with this fast-paced illustration storytelling and it like I said it just fits one fits the other and it's so awesome man and he didn't shy away from going gory he didn't shy away from showing you maggots and just all kinds of shit dude it's awesome and it, <laughs> it's just explosive this stuff really really brings back like that those good feelings of being a kid and reading comics and seeing things explode off of the page and just you can almost feel the concussion of an explosion that you you're reading because it's just that dynamic that you you feel it hit your chest that's Dan Mora's drawings. And last but certainly not least, we have Tamara Bonvillain doing the color work on this comic. And Jesus, <laughs> she is killing it. Just like I said, one fits the other fits the other. And Tamara Bonvillain's color fills these illustrations and brings them even further to life or further to death, depending on which panel you're looking at. I mean, the... the the color is just so vibrant and jumping off of the pages. And the color really is a part of this story. When things, when these feral stories start to kind of cross over, there are actual colors that are on display that even like normal people will see and they'll remark like what the fuck is up with these colors and Tamara Bond villain is just going nuts with it but it doesn't look like someone having a seizure you know on the page it's it looks very intentional every like stroke looks like it was done with confidence and purpose and this thing is just colored so goddamn gorgeously this is one that i guarantee you especially if you guys are picking this up in physical form this color is going to pop and you are going to see it like no other it is impressive normally i talk a lot about the writer a lot about you know the the penciler or the illustrator it's not a whole lot that i give you know a whole lot of props to the colorist and i kind of feel bad about that but i there is no way i could talk about once in future without talking about tamra bond villain because she once again without her i don't know if this thing is as successful to me as as it could be okay like i do think that all three of these people are very key i think if you take one out this comic just falls they are killing it and tamra von villain <laughs> slow clap girl you have got my fucking attention in fact i'm gonna go start digging through shit and trying to find what else you have done just because you got me well all right guys i think that's gonna about wrap it up for me I, that's covering one two and three volumes of wants in future i know i barely touched on it but i wanted to get something that wasn't so spoilery like my excalibur video just know this quest for comics is going to come in all shapes and sizes guys so just just beware all right for those that thought that this sounded like something really cool and maybe you're looking for more out of me know that i'm going to continue to quest amongst once in future in fact i just picked up do i have it oh i do boom issue 19 i picked this up from my comic shop i'm going to be reading this and i will be reviewing not reviewing it i'm going to be full-on spoiler going into this one okay so for, now that we're kind of caught up with wants and future i've I kind of given you guys the the line either you're gonna hook or not from now on i'm gonna spoil the fucking shit out of this comic book so just beware all right <laughs> for those that hung out and you know actually watched this bless your black hearts because i know this is not easy I, don't, I never make it easy on you. In fact, I think that I'm trying to make this almost as difficult as I possibly can. So for you that are still here, goddamn, you're hardcore and you're badass. And that's all I have to say. All right? All right. <laughs>